when we first look at blood, it looks a bit confusing. Pink, purple, even more pink. But let's look at the function here. One of the main roles is going to be to transport oxygen to the cells, carbon dioxide away from our cells, so we breathe it out, and nitric oxide so we can uh, contract our muscles. And there we have it, all these little pink cells. Some of them are solitary, and some of them are in clumps. We call this agglutination or agglutinated. When blood is disturbed, it will clump like this, which can be deadly if it's uh, system-wide. So these are erythrocytes or red blood cells, RBC, all the same thing. All this background pink erythrocytes. What if we get cut though? We don't want to bleed to death. And so we have platelets. If we take a closer look here, we'll see these little dots scattered all about. And they release tiny fibers called fibrinogen that makes blood viscous or thick. And in doing so, it helps to uh, slow the flow of blood, forms a clot, eventually a scab. They're not really cells. They are just particles of cells. And so these two erythrocytes last about 120 days before they die. Platelets wander around aimlessly, just pretty quiet until there's damage to the tissues. But what about when we're attacked by a virus or bacteria? Well, we have these cells called neutrophils. They're fast and furious. Here's one here. You can see the segmented nucleus. That tells you right now it's a, it's a neutrophil. If we look around, they are the most abundant. Uh, here's another one here. They don't all look the same because it kind of depends on how they're laying. Like this one looks like dots. That one looks like, uh, oh, and here's one that looks like a little bit like a letter U. These are all neutrophils. The most abundant and the fastest to respond. So, if, you know, if we're in a movie theater and someone sneezes, we take a lung full of uh, bacteria, viruses, the neutrophils are there. They're going to help protect us. But what about viruses, though? The viruses are um, abundant and we need something to attack them. And here we have it. You use solid purple, compare them to the neutrophil, quite different. Lymphocytes, different name and different purpose. They're going to seek out viruses. So here's a lymphocyte. These are relatively abundant as well. And sometimes, uh, depending on the illness, you'll see more lymphocytes than neutrophils. All right, so those are the key players for the first onset of an infection. But what about if we're um, fighting an allergy? In that case, we have basophils, eosinophils, and there, let's see, here's, where's a, there's a good, Eosinophil. Now you can see it has a, a segmented nucleus, a little bit like the neutrophil, but they tend to be pinkish and covered in granules. So there's a classic eosinophil. Got lucky there. And here's a basophil. Now at first you might think, well, that looks like a lymphocyte. And it sort of does, but it's got so many granules that you can't even see the nucleus. And you can see some granules on this edge here. All right, they're somewhat similar because they're abundant when the patient is fighting uh, uh, something harmless. And so if we see a lot of these in a blood draw, we think, uh oh, we got a major uh, allergic reaction going on. Um, and sometimes if it's a parasitic infection, especially if they've been overseas. Okay, there's a nice little eosinophil right there. Okay, finally, the monster monocyte, which is indeed large. You look at the size, you can see it, it you know, outweighs the eosinophil, the um, erythrocytes, lymphocytes. Nothing matches the size of the monster monocyte. Uh, sometimes they're squashed and you just see a kind of a, a cloud, but we got lucky on this one. They attack everything, viruses, bacteria, and even splinters, all right? Now they're slow. But once they, uh, once the infection's been going on for, you know, three or four days, then the monocytes become what are called phagocytes. Phago means to eat cells. And they're so abundant that they start showing up in the mucus. Like when your mucus starts getting thick and yellowish, that's a sign that millions of monocytes have died. 
protecting you. Yes, these warriors. Um, and most of the time, you can see why we don't really need to take uh, herbal teas or a lot of these powders and pills that people like to say we need. If, uh, if we can just keep a good attitude, eat right, get enough sleep, and take care of our white blood cells, then uh, that is often enough.